Hey everyone, we want to welcome you to Mended Life Talk, where we seek to see broken lives mended by Christ. And if you're new and you're just joining us for the first time, we've been in a series called The Greatest. Many of you may know that GOAT stands for um, the greatest of all time. It's an expression that describes who might be the best in any particular field, especially when it comes to sports. Thinking of someone like Tom Brady or Peyton Manning and uh, Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali, uh, Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods yeah. is another good one. You know, Sugar Ray Leonard's another name that comes to mind. But today we're finishing up our series as we've been invited to do great things in God's kingdom. But as we've seen, greatness is not gained by earthly standards. In fact, Jesus continues to tell his listeners and now his readers that we can't look at the kingdom through our earthly eyes. God's earthly kingdom for us began in the garden, but we messed that up. And uh, the rest of the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, is about restoring what was destroyed by that decision in the garden. Yeah, and, and I think it's interesting, Chris, because God wants to get his kingdom back to what he said in the beginning was good. Mm -hmm. That's why he's called the good, good father. And in the Bible, there's there's four accounts uh, of the life of Christ. Um, in what we know is, is the Gospels. And, and throughout the Gospels, there's about 126 uh, mentions of wow. this kingdom that he, that he talks about. And he says, like, the kingdom is here or the kingdom is at hand. And, and, and he talked about it a lot. But there, was, there were people that were confused. And as Jesus enters the story uh, and, and, his, and he starts his ministry, he talked a lot about this, um, the kingdom of God. And the religious leaders of the day, they, they pushed back against the idea of a heavenly kingdom and the fact that it can't be described by earthly standards or, or earthly uh, terms. Jesus over and over again would say, you got it wrong, guys. And in John chapter, uh, John chapter 8, he says that you judge me by human standards, but I don't judge anyone. Mm, I love that. I love that Jesus says that, you know. And, and Jesus says that, that you know, our, you're trying to make this kingdom that I bring make sense, but you can't because this isn't the kingdom of earth. You know, he's like, this is from heaven. And he says, and, and he also says, you know, so I'm also from heaven. And this is going to be different. This is one of my favorite things that Jesus says when he's going around. And, and he turns to those who's following him and he says, you know, listen, listen, to be a leader in the kingdom that I'm talking about, it requires a different approach. And he says this in Matthew chapter 20, verse 26 through 28. He says, but among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. For even the son of man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. So how can we do great things for the kingdom of God, simply put, we just need to put others first. Yeah, and it's really fascinating, Chris, because Jesus really, he kind of flips the script and and, and he wants us to put others first. The idea, uh, it it's, it's follows the golden rule that many of us learned as, as a kid that actually comes uh, from Matthew's gospel. And it, and it says to do, do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. And this is the essence. Uh, of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. Uh, this is the, the, the epitome of it all, Jesus says. Do to others whatever you'd like them to do to you. Jesus not only preached this, he lived it out. He was the example of this over and over again. And, and what we're gonna look at today is one of the best examples of, of Jesus putting others first, and I like to read it. And it's found in, in John chapter 13, um, verses uh, beginning with uh, verse one. So, and it goes like this, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his father. He had loved his disciples uh, among his ministry here on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. And it was time for supper, and the devil had already prompted, prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the father had given him authority over everything, and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, they had a different exchange, and, and we're going to see that in a minute. Okay. You know, so Jesus and 12 of his closest friends, um, they, they were gathered together, and we know that, that it was time for dinner. 
and and everyone is getting together and but but this is not a normal dinner there's a lot going on and and jesus knows that his hour has come and and he knows that he's about to be murdered and and he's not not only does he know that he's about to be killed but he knows that the person who's going to betray him it's not somebody that he hasn't met right. before it's not somebody that's down the road it's someone sitting down at his table to eat with him yeah in in this this uh, happening this dinner happens at the very end of jesus ministry mm -hmm. so wh what's he going to do what do you say in a moment like this well you do something unforgettable um, you talk about the thing that is most important. You do something that reminds them. And this is the essence of it all. Look what Jesus does. And in, is, is that a passage in, in John chapter 13 continues that Jesus got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist. He poured water into the basin and began to wash and dry their feet. Um, they've been walking most of the day, and Jesus does something that no other leader would imagine doing. He gets down, and he does something that only a servant would do, and he washes their feet. Wow. Man, I mean, <laughs> that's not normal. No, For that not. time period, it's not normal. I mean, they're sitting <clears throat> down, and, and Jesus, he does the unthinkable. And, and mind you, real quick, their feet were nasty, yeah, man. Dirty. <laughs> Dirt roads, the animal droppings on the road, they're walking. That stuff's cake between their toes. I mean, it's nasty. Yeah. And Jesus, he gets down, he does the unthinkable, and he pours the water. And one by one, he begins to wash their feet. And he's showing them what it means to be a part of the kingdom. And now, you know, it's Peter's turn. Yeah. He gets to Peter. And and, and <clears throat> what happens is it's so it's kind of hilarious in a way. You know, he, he comes to Peter. And, and Peter's like, no, you're not washing my feet. I'm not having it. And then <laughs> Jesus is saying to him, he's like, he's like, you know, I'm going to wash your feet. And Peter's like, no, you're not going to wash my feet. But then Jesus replied, he says, you don't under, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but someday you will. And then Peter, he pushes back because this is not how he sees greatness in a leader. But Jesus responds in John chapter 13, verse 8, 9, he says, he says, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. He says, Simon Peter, Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands and my head as well, Lord, not just my feet. He's like, man, just dump, yeah. wash my whole body. I love that. You know, and Jesus shows how important this is with the phrase. He, sa he says, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. And, and then Jesus continues, and, and he's going to tell us exactly what this is and, and why it's so important. This is the essence of, again, of what Jesus is teaching in John chapter 13. After washing their feet, uh, he put his robe again, uh, put his robe on again, and he sat down and he asked them this question. Do you understand what I'm doing? And he said, you, you, he continues, you call me teacher and Lord, and, and you're right, because that's really what I am. And as since I, I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you need to do the same thing. Mm. Wash each other's feet. Wow. I have given you the example, he says, to follow. Do as I have done. Wow, man. You know, Jesus, he knows that we are human and that we need a follow-up to the example. So he explains this example. And he says, you know, I want you to go and do what I did. Wash each other's feet. Serve one another. And you know, this is what God did. He do to others as I have done to you. And Jesus, the king, he, he took the form of a servant. You know, the king went first with washing their feet. The king went first with reconciling the kingdom that we broke. The king went first with loving you and me. You know, so how does this translate? You know, what exactly is he saying here? And simply put, he's saying, put others first. Yeah, I, I love that. Put others first. Jesus says, if you want to know my kingdom, if you want to know what my kingdom is all about, if, if you want to know how it operates, my kingdom is, is really different than anything that you've ever experienced. It's different than what your gut, your heart, or your mind would, would say or, or, or try to interpret. Jesus is telling us that his kingdom is different. He is saying to put others first. And, and really that is at times so difficult and, and at times uh, unnatural. So how do we do this? And, and for the remainder of our time, uh, we, we want to look at two different things that we can do to put others first. And, and the first one is this, it's, it's time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, time. Yep.
Time is a big one and it shows up in every aspect of our lives. We see places we could serve and make a difference, but we say, man, we just don't, we just don't have time. We're, we're just way too busy. Um, and for all of us, you know, we live in this mindset that we know what Jesus said and, and we know we should uh, put others first. But soon, soon we'll do that. We'll, 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 have, we'll have more time when we can do that. Or when I get that job and, and I make more money, when I finish my class in, in school and in college or, <laughs> or you know, um, I, I can get a bigger vehicle that I can, I can carry people around. I can, yeah. I can serve. And um, it, it's hard because all of us are so busy and, and we have uh, a lot of different uh, excuses. So we need to be more intentional and make space to serve and be available. Time, of course, never frees itself up. It, it takes me and you making decisions and saying, no, this is important. Jesus told us that this is the essence of it all. So start today. And I've got to put others first. And I would say one other thing that, that kind of stops us from being able to put others first, and it's this. Basically a title. It's a title, right? Yeah, we want that title. Yeah. I mean, we need to remember who we are. I mean, Jesus remembered uh, that, that he was the son and that he was doing the will of the father. And so often we forget that. You know, we don't think that we have the right gifts or the abilities. So we step back um, from serving and, and we basically we use it as an excuse. Right, right. And nowhere in this passage does Jesus talk about the disciples' talents or spiritual gifts. So please don't hear what I'm not saying. You know, we're not saying that these aren't important because they are. But many of us are still trying to figure out what our gifts are. So we bow out of helping, you know, we help uh, bow out of helping our friends or our family members or, or even getting involved in ministries. You know, Jesus was God's son, yet he washed feet. And Jesus invites us to serve and to start somewhere. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because it's Jesus' identity uh, that shaped who he was. And this identity is what allowed him to say is nothing is above me and nothing is too low for me to do. Because my father is the God of really big things and he's the God of really small things and of the details. So yes, I will do anything and everything for my father because I know I'm a son. When you put others first, even in the little things and in the big things, it makes a huge difference, not only in your life, but in the lives of those you serve. And that's, that's, so, that's so dramatic. So remember, you are in Christ. You are adopted into the family of God and families serve each other. And God invites us to remember the role that we play in his kingdom. Yeah. You know, Jeff, I love what Nancy Lee DeMoss says. You know, she says, you know, we are never more like Jesus than when we serve him or others. And there is, is, is not a higher calling than to be a servant. You know, in 1 Peter chapter four, um, it says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. You know, Jesus is calling us to serve others. You know, so, so as we close, I would like to pray for us as we make time in our busy schedules to serve and to bring the kingdom of God closer to earth. So, so let, in doing that, let, let's pray, Jeff. And, and we're gonna pray for God to help us create margin in our lives to be the servant, sure. to be his hands and feet. All right, so Father, we come to you today and we, we ask you to open our eyes and, and to be able to put what's important in front. And Lord, what's most important in this life is honoring you and we honor you by serving others. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to this earth and, and not just for dying on that cross to redeem us, but for showing us an example, showing us how to serve one another, showing us what the kingdom of heaven looks like. So, Father, we have that ability and, and, and we have this awesome opportunity to be your hands and feet. So, God, I pray that, that we would create margin in our lives to serve. Uh, whether that's serving our friends or our family or, or even serving that church in a, in a ministry capacity, no matter what that looks like. Uh, Father, we just ask that you would be with us, Lord, that you would give us the wisdom and understanding of what's important in life. Father, we get so caught up in being so busy. So, God, I just pray that you would allow us, give us that, that insight to carve out that time 
to uh, serve other people because it's so important. And it's so important that Jesus spoke about it. And he mentioned the kingdom of heaven 126 times. So thank you for that, God. Thank you for, for always pursuing us and never giving up on us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, guys. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us today. And if you missed this week's message, you can head over to ringgoldchurch.com um, slash media and, and watch this week's sermon. And be sure to join us uh, this weekend and either online or in person on campus at 9-11 uh, each Sunday morning. And we can't wait to, to see you then. It's been really good to, to see the different people showing up yeah. as, as church has been opening and, cool. and connecting with everybody. So we want to let you guys know if you haven't been here for a while, we miss you. And uh, we love you and can't wait for you guys to, to come back. So God bless you all. And we'll see you next week on Mended Life Talk. All right. Take care, guys.